Welcome to the Bladed Tech Channel's 57th edition and second year of the Space and Tech Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of July 12th through the July 18th in space exploration, science, and technology. July 12th, 1960. Astronauts underwent a five and a half day course in desert survival training at the Air Training Command Survival School, Stead Air Force Base, Nevada, on this date. The possibility of an arid area landing was remote, but did exist. So this training was accomplished to supply the astronaut with the confidence and ability to survive desert conditions until recovery. The course consisted of one and a half days of academics, one day of field demonstrations, and three days of isolated remote site training. Survival equipment, normally installed in the Mercury spacecraft, was used to provide the most realistic conditions. No Mercury, Gemini, or Apollo capsule ever landed in the desert. In fact, the only time an American astronaut had to use desert survival training was in fiction. In the 1978 movie Capricorn One, Mars astronaut Colonel Charles Brubaker, played by actor James Brolin, not only survives the Texas desert, but fights his way across it against gunmen intent on killing him. The movie was excoriated by critics, but its original premise proved to have lasting power. Capricorn 1 is rated 62% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes in 2021. One of Brolin's co-stars was one O.J. Simpson, who was still playing for the San Francisco Giants at the time, and retired a year later to pursue an acting career. July 13, 1995, the spacecraft Galileo dropped a probe towards Jupiter's atmosphere on this date. The probe was to become the first Earth emissary ever to penetrate the atmosphere of any of the outer gas giants. The mission objectives included measurement of the temperature and pressure structure of Jupiter's atmosphere, its chemical composition, and cloud layer and particle size and density. Measurements were also made of the amount of helium relative to hydrogen, winds in the atmosphere, how sunlight and energy coming from the deep interior were distributed, and the presence of lightning. Reaching Jupiter's outer atmosphere on December 7th, the craft returned valuable data for 58 minutes as it plunged into the Jovian cauldron. It endured a maximum deceleration of 228 Gs, about a minute after entry when temperatures scaled up to 29,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The transmitter failed 61 and a half minutes after entry when the spacecraft had descended about 112 miles, evidently due to the enormous 23 atmospheres of pressure. The data captured and relayed back to NASA indicated an intense radiation belt about 31,000 miles above Jupiter's clouds, few organic compounds, and winds as high as 30 miles an hour. The Galileo atmospheric probe is still the only instrument to have been sent into Jupiter's atmosphere. July 14, 2013, the world's last telegram was sent in India on this date. India's 163-year-old telegram service was the last to shut down when email and texting had finally superseded bicycle telegram messengers. In Great Britain, telegram delivery ceased in 2008, while in the U.S., Western Union's dwindling service was terminated on January 27, 2006. The first formal telegram was sent by Samuel Morse in Washington to his business partner Alfred Vail on May 24, 1844. The message said, What hath God wrought? A dramatic attempt to impress upon Congress the power of telegraphy, from whom he was seeking funding. In time, wires were strung across the U.S. and other countries, and then under oceans to create worldwide connections. July 15, 1975, Apollo 15's originally assigned command module, CSM-111, was launched from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 39B on a Saturn 1B rocket for the Apollo-Soyuz test project on this date. Apollo 15 flew with CSM-112. The ASTP crew was Bran, Slayton, and Stafford. CSM-111 docked two days later with Soyuz-19, which had been launched on the same day. The Soyuz crew was Leonov and Kubasov. The 
two crews conducted a number of joint experiments over the next four days, after which the Soyuz-19 crew departed on the 21st, landing in Kazakhstan. Apollo continued in orbit for another two days, conducting additional independent experiments, and then prepared for deorbit. On July 23rd, the crew vented the command module tunnel, jettisoned the docking module, and returned to Earth. It was to be the last Apollo mission ever conducted, and the last manned U.S. mission until Shuttle Columbia's launch in 1981. July 16, 1969, Apollo 11 launched from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 39A on a Saturn V rocket on this date. The Apollo 11 crew was Aldrin, Armstrong, and Collins. The command module was CSM-107 and the lunar lander was LM-5. This mission featured the first ever manned landing on the moon. On July 20th, Armstrong and Aldrin entered LM-5, separated from the command module, began the descent to the moon, touching down shortly thereafter. Man's first step on the moon was taken by Armstrong at 10.56 p.m. Eastern Standard. As he stepped on the surface of the moon, Armstrong described the feat as, quote, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Aldrin joined Armstrong on the moon's surface 20 minutes later. After conducting experiments and gathering 50 pounds of samples of lunar soil and rocks, the two astronauts returned to the lander lifted off and rejoined the command module lunar orbit, upon which the crew returned to Earth. Interested viewers can find our condensed edit of the multi-day Apollo 11 mission, which we released in observation of the mission's 50th anniversary in short one. July 17, 1888. Engineer Granville Woods was issued a U.S. patent for laying electrical conduit and subway tunnels on this date. The patented design called for conductors to be laid in the rail bed below the surface of the ground, with a slot at the rail bed surface for traveling conductors to transfer power to the motor on the electric car. Woods was a prolific inventor and held numerous patents in diverse fields. He was by far the most prominent black American inventor and engineer in the late 19th and early 20th century, with technical achievements far in excess of most other engineers and scientists of any background. In addition to that for an electric underground railway, Wood's patents included that for a locomotive steam boiler, a synchronous multiplex railway telegraph, a telephone transmitter, an electric incubator for hatching chickens, and an automatic air brake for railroad cars. July 18, 1966. Gemini 10 launched from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 19 on a Titan II rocket on this date. The Gemini 10 crew was Collins and Young. The Gemini 10 mission objective was to rendezvous and dock with the unmanned Gemini Agena target vehicle that had been launched on an Atlas booster from the Launch Complex 14 just ahead of the manned flight. The docked vehicles achieved a manned flight altitude record for that time of 476 miles. One feature of the mission was a spacewalk by Collins from Gemini to Agena to retrieve a micrometeorite experiment. Collins lost his grip on Agena during his first attempt to retrieve the experiment and tumbled head over heels at the end of an umbilical around Gemini. However, his second attempt was successful. The orbiting and re-entry occurred two days after the launch with a splashdown of the Gemini 10 module 544 miles east of Cape Canaveral. We covered Gemini 6 in Milestones 29 and Gemini 8 in Milestone 72. Before we get to the current event of the week, we wanted to see if you enjoyed this 57th episode of Bladed Tech's The Space and Tech Rewind. If so, click that like button. Did you agree with our choices, or are there other events that were better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. And if you have suggestions for an event in the future, we'll take those too. We'll credit events we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not yet taken the opportunity as of yet to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now. and Click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. 
you can always unsubscribe, and subscribing is free. On June 16th, 2021, the Shenzhou 12 capsule and its crew of three launched on the Long March 2F rocket from the Zhiquan Satellite Launch Center and docked with China's Tianhe Space Station hours later. It is the first crewed visit to the facility. The crewed mission is the third of 11 launches planned for the construction of the three-module space station. Arrival of the Shenzhou 12 meant that it was the first time since May of 2000 that two orbiting space stations will be simultaneously inhabited. The feat was previously achieved when NASA's STS-101 shuttle mission and the Russian Federation Soyuz TM-30 capsule visited the ISS and Mir, respectively. The Chinese space program benefits from significant technology transfers from Roscosmos and the European Space Agency. The space station has been in planning since the Shenzhou program inception in 1992. The CCP is not permitted by NASA to use the International Space Station over concerns of the potential for U.S. space technology to be misappropriated for military purposes. And thus, the People's Republic of China has been forced to build its own space infrastructure. China and Russia intend on building a jointly managed base on the moon by 2036. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 250 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos on our microblogging accounts, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation Documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered in the Bladed Tech Gaming Channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed and Minds page, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed, and where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching. <laughs>